Now time for member statements. I turn to the member from I, I, I hit this mental mental block. Yes, thank you. York Southwest. York Southwest, and I apologize, York Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am thankful for the opportunity to rise in this house to recognize and honor the life of York Southwestern residents, Domenico Benicia. On Wednesday, September 9th, Mr. Benicia passed away peacefully, surrounded by his family in the comfort of his home. Domenico was a kind man and would always try to help others. He was a proud first president of the Palmo Park senior group that he was instrumental in creating. Domenico's loving family described him as a devoted, loving, and supportive husband to his late wife, Giuseppina. Together, they immigrated from Italy to Canada in 1964 to build a life installed with the values of unconditional love, hard work, and togetherness within their family and community. There was never a moment where he wasn't offering something to his neighbors, a testament to his deep-rooted generosity and hospitality within his home. I thank Domenico Benicia for many contributions he made to York Southwestern. Domenico loved his community, and his community loved him back. Hopefully, we can all learn from his legacy and be kind, gentle, and generous in our walk through life. My condolences to Domenico's family, and I leave you with what Domenico Benicia often liked to say. My home is your home. Saluto. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. Two weeks ago, I welcomed the Premier and the Minister of Education to Loretto Abbey Catholic Secondary School in my riding of Eglinton Lawrence to announce $550 million to build and expand schools in Ontario, including $24 million in funding for the school we met at. Loretto Abbey has been in its current location since 1927, but it was founded in 1847 when six Loretto sisters came from Ireland in the midst of a pandemic and founded a girls' school named after the Abbey in the area they came from. Our recent announcement was made in the Sister Yvonne Hunter Learning Commons. Sister Yvonne was the principal of the Abbey for many years. She recently shared with me that she had received hundreds of emails from past students who are absolutely thrilled about the announcement, and Sister Yvonne herself told me that it was the happiest day of her life. A few years ago, the remaining sisters moved out and the Toronto Catholic District School Board acquired the entire building in 2011. This funding will be used to upgrade the building to modern standards and to add 620 student places through renovations to the former convent in the historic building. I know that many future students will continue to make great memories at Loretto Abbey. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. Every year I struggle writing this speech. How can my words capture the horror of genocide? To share the story of how six, who stood tall and proud, who looked just like me, had to run and hide from state-sponsored mobs who had but one focus, one goal, murder. In the most vicious of ways, tires were placed around their necks. Kerosene was poured on their head. They were set on fire, burned alive in the street as the police stood by and watched or worse, participated in the murder. Elected officials, just like you and I, sitting in this assembly today, ordering the death of six. Betrayal, breaking our most sacred oath to protect those we serve. Combustible powder was used on the flesh of six. Children were beheaded. Women were raped. It's been 36 years. What more can I say about 1984, other than we will never forget the violence, the genocide that we face at the hands of the Indian government, and more. We will never, we will never stop fighting for justice. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Thornhill. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. As Remembrance Day approaches, I want to take the time to highlight the veterans and uh, also call out to my colleague, the MPP for Flamborough Granbrook, who's hoping to achieve uh, with her upcoming PMB um, the Exalting Our Veterans Act 2020, which would provide that an individual may request to be identified as a veteran on his or her driver's license or photo card. I'm hopeful that all members of this legislature will support year-round support for our veterans by supporting this initiative, as we seem to be all supporting the updates to the Soldiers' Aid, Aid Commission, which we just debated this week. Our Canadian veterans represent all communities across our province and country, and as the representative for Thornhill, I'd like to highlight the sacrifices made by our Jewish war veterans. There were 17,000 Jewish men and women who served Canada during World War II, and every Remembrance Day, as far as back as I can remember, Norm Gardner officiated and presented awards to some of them, and last year uh, it was included, and this year it's going to be tough. It's, uh, maybe we'll have a virtual ceremony. Um, it took place at the Jewish War Veterans Memorial near the Lippe Green Centre at the Sherman Campus in York Centre, and I'm fairly certain um, that uh, former MPP Monty Quinter attended every year uh, while he was elected. Um, and I just want to mention that Jewish tradition has storytelling from generation to generation. That's how we pass down information. And it's very important that we do the same with our veterans, that we share their stories, highlight their, their sacrifices, and uh, remember them every day, not just on Remembrance Day. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Mm. Member statements. The member for Parkdale High Park. Speaker, I rise today in support of the land defenders at 1492 Landback Lane. The Haudenosaunee have lived for thousands of years in the area known today as the Haldeman Tract, and a treaty with the British Crown in 1784 guarantees their entitlement to this land. However, in what has become a familiar story in Ontario, their rights have not been recognized, and they now face the prospect of forcible removal from their land. The Haudenosaunee have been waiting for justice for far too long. They have seen the federal and provincial governments continue to pass the buck, refusing to listen to community while their land is being stolen for unwanted development. They have spent decades in the courts to no avail. Now Premier Ford has abdicated his responsibilities, leaving the OPP to enforce the will of the developers. Police enforcement of a unilateral decision is not a sign of nation-to-nation -nation relationship. Of what use are land acknowledgments if Indigenous people continue to be forcibly removed from the land that is demonstrably theirs? The critical work of reconciliation cannot occur without respecting Indigenous sovereignty, and that work must start now. I echo the land defenders at 1492 Landback Lane, as well as the Haudenosaunee Confederacy Chiefs Council and the Six Nations Elected Council in their call for a moratorium on development to allow for a thorough and respectful nation-to-nation -nation negotiation. Thank you. Member for Milton. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in recognition of Food for Life, a community organization locally managed by two leaders in my riding of Milton, Lori Bradding and Melanie Bastions. Food for Life is helping those most vulnerable with the goal of making Milton hunger-free by sourcing surplus food like fruits, vegetables, dairy, and meat. Uh, through this generous donation by the Hadley Family Foundation, and in partnership with the Milton Osmus Club, Food for Life is pleased to announce their new refrigerated van is ready to keep serving the Milton community. This van will make sure their food rescue and redistribution efforts can continue, Mr. Speaker. What's more, Food for Life will be using the van to deliver a new mobile outreach program on Wednesday evenings at the Milton Sports Centre, along with free dinners being offered every Sunday from 5 to 8 p.m. at participating restaurants wow. like Caribbean Vibes and Mills Barbecue. I want to thank both Lori and Melanie for their tremendous work in the community and making a tremendous difference, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Windsor to come see. Good morning, Speaker. I rise today to tell you once again the good people in Windsor and Essex County have come through financially, 
for our local hospice. For the past 18 years, a friend of mine has run a face-to-face -face campaign for hospice. It's a simple concept. You donate $10, then you ask nine of your friends to donate $10, and before you know it, you've helped raise $100 for a good cause. John Fairley is the Vice President of College Communications and Community Relations at St. Clair College. For 20 years, he's also been the host of a show on our local cable channel called Face to Face. He interviews the movers and shakers from around town, and his show is one of the more highly rated ones on our local cable channel. This year's campaign for hospice, despite money being tight thanks to COVID layoffs, they brought in almost $96,000. Over the last 18 years, Mr. Fairley has helped raise more than $1.2 million for our local hospice. All of the money raised goes directly to the hospice. There's no middleman, there's no management fee, there's no corporate rake-off. It's all used to help support patients and their families during their stay at the hospice. Had I been wearing a cap this morning, Speaker, I would certainly tip it for John Fairley and his face-to-face -face campaign for the hospice of Windsor and Essex County. Thank you. Thank you very much. The member for Guelph. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Crime Prevention Week is a perfect time to highlight the partnership between Guelph Police and the Canadian Mental Health Association of Waterloo Wellington called the Integrated Mobile Police and Crisis Team, or IMPACT. It is clear that current policing enforcement model is not adequately equipped to respond to mental health crisis calls. So I want to thank Police Chief Gord Kobe and staff who have recognized this limitation by partnering with CMHC, CMHA to respond to mental health calls. IMPACT is a big success. The team of crisis response coordinators Working with Guelph Police have diverted 130 people from hospital over five months. The result is, one, police officers can focus on community safety needs that reflect their training. Two, there are reduced demands on hospital resources. And three, most importantly, it reduces trauma for individuals in crisis. This, partner speaker, this partnership speaker unfortunately has limitations, however, due to the funding model. Guelph Police are funded 24-7 but CMHA staff are only funded till 11 p.m. every night. So I would call on the government to provide funding for a 24-7 mental health response for people in crisis so that programs like IMPACT can grow in Guelph and in communities across Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Order. <laughs> Member statements. Member for York Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I rise to honour the 2.3 million Canadian servicemen and women who served and continue to serve our great nation, and the 118,000 Canadians who made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. When the world's at war, Canada stands with its allies in defence of freedom. From the trenches of Vimy Ridge to the mountains of Afghanistan, we must remember all Canadians who served and died in every war, armed conflict and peacekeeping mission. We remember the 650,000 Canadians who served in World War I and more than the 66,000 killed. We remember the more than 1 million Canadians who served in World War II and the 45,000 who did not come home. We remember the 26,000 Canadians who served in Korea and 516 who died at war. We remember the 30,000 Canadians who fought in Vietnam and the 134 who were killed. We remember the 56,000 Canadian peacekeepers who served in the Balkans and 23 who died on European soil yet again. But, Speaker, we must also remember a more recent conflict. Between 2001 and 2018, more than 40,000 Canadian men and women served in Afghanistan. Altogether, 158 Canadians lost their lives in the fight against the Taliban. Canada's commitment to peace and democracy around the world has come at a great price. But make no mistake, the men and women we remember in November fought and died for the very principle that define us as Canadians. I'm proud of Canada's armed forces. I'm proud to be Canadian. God bless our men and women in uniform, lest we forget.
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Barrie and his friend. I rise in this House to recognize Mike and Jennifer Richardson, also known as Keeping Up with the Richardson in Innisfil. This weekend, they organized a Halloween contest in Innisfil, where uh, people entered for $10. Uh, it, the proceeds went to the Innisfil Food Bank and Christmas for Kids. And her goal was to have 50 homes participate by decorating. And she had 100 homes participate. Uh, thanks to local businesses who donated many prizes, we were able to award 13 winners uh, prizes uh, thanks to uh, small businesses like Johnny Burger, uh, Innisfil Dental, Cooks Down Antique Market, Sweet Home Essentials, to name so many more. And today, Jennifer announced another community event that she's organizing called Light It Up Innisfil, where she's encouraging residents to decorate their home for the holiday season, be it Christmas, Hanukkah, or Kwanzaa's, to bring the spirit of giving alive, with again, all proceeds going to the Innisfil Food Bank and Christmas for Kids, two local organizations that make a, a very big difference in our backyard. Like so many of the, of the businesses that I had mentioned that also make a big difference and donated prizes, to name some more, Good Balance, Miss Jenny's Gift, Rosie's uh, Fiscotti, of course we have uh, the Lavender Floral, and we have many councillors like our Deputy Mayor, Dan Davidson, who gave a gift card along with Carolyn Payne and Donna Rossetti. So thank you to the Mayor who participated, all the councillors, and our MP, John Broussard. And thank you to the Richardsons. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.